Captain's Log. It's another Archon podcast. I'm Alex Ansary. Coming to you from the San Luis Valley. Ancient land. Pristine. Surrounded by sagebrush. Being visited by a rooster who came here recently for a safe haven. Protection from the coyotes. A little bit of food, a little bit of water. So, there's something powerful about human consciousness. It's constantly appearing in science fiction. Uh, the, the nature of human consciousness. This, this theme of being in a matrix. You know, it didn't start with the Matrix movie series. It's been around for some time. Uh, Dark City comes up here and there. Is an allegory for the Archons. For those that have seen it, you might uh, recall that the Archons have some sort of a machine. And this machine is like the core of their power. This machine is powered from this, this world, this Archon world that they control. Not to be a spoiler, but they're after this guy, the main character in the movie, because of the power that he holds. His, his, his powers of the mind, powers of the spirit, whatever we call it, however we identify it. And so this is ultimately why he was being chased in this world, in this, in this world depicted in the movie Dark City. So there's a, there's a concrete theme there in Dark City regarding human consciousness, human potential, and it actually being a threat. So it's, it's really important to hold this in our mind as we look at the subject and as we uh, cross-reference other studies that have been done in, in general on the power of human consciousness. And whether it be studies or experiments regarding... Uh, telekinesis to something a little more unknown like um, group meditations with a collective focus, the same focus the same specific focus at the same time and I might add during solar flares or during a geomagnetic storm where a collective group of human beings is harnessing the power of the sun or the power of the electromagnetic spectrum of creating something out of nothing through the thought forms generated. So I think that there's power in that. And it manifests in different ways. But most people aren't aware of it. The dark side of that is that which comes about through the holographic programming from television and, and, and mass media. And that which is controlled by the Archonic Realms. So, big media, mass media, pop culture, Hollywood. And I suspect that there truly is something going on where you have people programmed to be terrified at the same moment, at the same time. And there, there has been a study into the, uh, into the fact that the Earth's magnetic field went through a bump around the same time period that the towers were being televised on television for the world to see, the world traumatized at the same moment that trauma created a ripple. That trauma, that fear, that alarm, that shock, that panic, it, it, it created a ripple in the Earth's magnetic field that has been measured. And there were several ripples throughout that day coinciding with the towers being hit and the towers falling. Those are four events World Trade Center number seven, of course, removed from the from the heavy publicity that day. So we can see those heavily televised events, those four events, towers being hit and towers falling, and ripples in the Earth's magnetic field. There is a science behind that. That is the generation of a a, a, a change in the Earth's magnetic field through fear through an engineered event that clearly has involved 
all the major super state nations, including Russia and China. There's no way the United States by themselves could could keep this under wraps. There's no real way that the other governments have truly uh, stood opposed to the official story of 9-11, nor the official story of ISIS. In fact, they're, they're right on board building their own anti-ISIS armies, even though it's well known that the West is, is funding so much of this. So clearly, these super state nations are controlled by the Archons, the Archons that are leading us towards world war. And that's where the media comes in, through the distorted reports uh, as we see nation turned against nation, as we see the increase in war rhetoric and calls for war and retaliation at any point in time, and this is this is really screwing up the public consciousness, uh, and and it's created a world of fear. People are afraid for their children. Some people wish they never brought their children into this world, and so as a result of that, some children may not be getting the love that they deserve from their parents that are being traumatized by the fact that they got to be parents in this kind of a world. Those parents need to grow up blow their friggin' nose and be a good parent for that kid because they did bring that kid in this world and they are responsible. So we shouldn't be sitting here just traumatized to the point to where, you know, holes are opening up in our, in our fields and we should be studying and exploring how to harness the powers of the sun to counteract that which parasites on us. So I've, I've heard of several studies, quiet studies, not really well known, about groups of people that have put their mind together at the same point in time, focusing on the same outcome. Uh, Burl Payne cites a few studies from the late 70s where uh, a satellite somehow ceased to work and it was in a certain orbit and there were certain experiments done with various results, not all successful, but those were experiments that led him to believe, Burl Payne that is, that human consciousness can affect the sun. Not only are we affected by the sun, we can affect the sun itself. Now I am familiar with the idea that we can affect the weather. And even though there's manipulation of the weather, which truly could be manipulating human consciousness because we're connected with, with the atmosphere. What's going on with the atmosphere? What's going on with the air? That affects human consciousness. That affects our thinking. Uh, that, that affects our brain processes. processes. Uh, that affects us. So storms affect human beings. Earthquakes affect human beings. Solar flares affect human beings. Could, but could human beings be affected other things? We look at crystals. Tr- crystals transmit and receive. Human beings transmit and receive. And human consciousness clearly has an effect on water. And studies have been shown hidden messages in water People are made of water. We talk about psychic protection and people bouncing different signals off each other in the city and why certain cities are viewed to be um, not very positive places. It's because the sensitivity of the thought forms that are bouncing around these human beings that are mostly made of water. Add in super moons, <laughs> add in solar flares, add in things going on with other planets, add in psychic interference uh, from uh, sources that we know of, sources that we don't know of. And unintentional inter- interference, just the way the human body is is responding to the Wi-Fi, cranked all the way up, and the smart meters, you know, and all these lights and electromagnetic stuff. So some say that the very fact that we're under attack means that there's something powerful about us. And that could be very possible. I'm actually biting a few, taking a few pieces of cactus out of my hand that I accidentally, there's a lot of cactus out here in the desert. We're in the high desert of South Central Colorado. And there are people that come up on the radar for Archon harassment. <laughs> you know, just like, uh, you know, you think of harassment in the real world, someone gets a phone call and there's like a, a heavy voice on the other end or there's no one there or something else. Yeah, there's there's other forms of harassment. And there are reasons for it. And instead of looking at this from like a situation where by looking at it, we're giving it power. Uh, I think this is a period of time where a lot of people are taking their power back. And the first step is becoming aware that there's an issue. Uh, becoming aware that these energies coming in caused by the sun are neutral. But shit could be going down when that's going down. And that there are ways of using these energies 
to counter those forces that are trying to use those very energies themselves to attack us. It's like ammunition. It's neutral coming in. The energy of the sun is neutral coming in. It's not necessarily harmful to the archons, necessarily. It is boosting up all kinds of things. And the power of human consciousness can visualize turning that solar energy back at the archons in a way that disrupts their machine, as depicted in the conclusion of Dark City the movie. And to speak in general terms, I, I think a lot of this is leaning this direction of a collective focus to harness the power of the sun uh, as if we were harp ourselves and disrupting their grid. As, as we visualize each and every day that we go through our meditations that we are, we are blasting through their grid, their chemtrail grid, their manipulated grid. And we are connecting with whether we call it the galactic core or whether we call it something else. But our, truly our intentions are to connect with the true light, true creationism, the true, the true force of creation. Uh, beyond these cosmos, of all the cosmos, connecting with our true self. So that same electromagnetic spectrum isn't something to be feared. That same thing that's boosted by the sun, there's also things we can learn. You should, we can learn about, you know, the portals connecting our earth to the sun. Well, then what is going on with us as human beings, being that we also have magnetic fields around us, you know, uh, and there are also energies attracted to us. And we know the sun is a massive uh, source of life for all, all things. So we contemplate how we use this power. How we use our powers in a collective sense. But we do it, we do it intentionally and we do it in individually. But we are actually working collectively in an unorganized, yet organized, unfocused, yet focused again, collective yet individual, <laughs> fight against the archons to disrupt their machine of control, uh, to bring us freedom, to visualize the world being free of their control, of where they have taken the earth, uh, to heal the earth of what has been done to it by the archons and, and who the archons have brought under their control. See, these are all things in our own power that we can do throughout the course of our entirety, the entirety of our lifetime. Dedicating our lives to seeing, uh, to at least seeing a world without archon control by earning our right to live in that kind of a world. And that is where deeds and actions and morality and bravery, bravery of spirit, are all very important. And investigating the ways of the spirit of the supernatural of, of the shaman. And these beings have gone by many names and have been, uh, have been the subject of, of mankind's conversations for thousands of years. Uh, what these forces are doing in our lives, what we can do to eradicate them, to counterattack them, what we're doing in a realm where they exist, period. And they're at a level where they can manipulate people and implant thoughts. One question leads to another. What are we, what are we doing here in a type of dimension where that stuff's going on, period, in that type of spiritual, biological video game? You know, when within the question of that, what is the truth? Are we meant to be here? Do we have to keep coming back here? Or is that a lie as well that binds us to this kind of a world, this false belief that this is our true home? When we exit this world in one lifetime only to meet the council, the lords of karma, to be told to go back. Is there truly something to this concept of becoming conscious enough to where we're able to see things as they are, including uh, those things that tie us to this world to where when we truly do pass on, we're able to pass through those gates, those pillars that tie us to this world to where we're actually able to go beyond 
And as we, as we breathe now in the current bodies, our consciousness is able to go beyond and connect with source beyond the lower astral realms. That we're able to hear our own voice and, and tap into a labyrinth of knowledge and information inside ourselves using this power. To cultivate our own sight, not be not be diluted and and misled into into listening to voices and and becoming afraid of apocalyptic events and and tying ourselves down to certain da- dates and and periods in time, like be, becoming a part of these collective movements of insanity of society. People are predicting all these things to go down in one particular point in time, which seems to be more of a point in time where energy is being harvested. So, I do speculate openly of the value of dedicating our spirits towards the, the eternal uh, eradication of that type of a system, aligning our body, mind, and spirits with the actions that leads to a world without them, and asking ourselves those deeper questions as to uh, what actions can lead to escaping the uh, the gravitational pull of Earth itself, if we truly are trying to ascend beyond this world, what is thus then required of us? Because that which has been told in the New Age movement has been a perversion of teachings. It's been a buffet of lies. It's led to the destruction of families. It's led to long-term energy uh, attachment problems for those people that have involved themselves in such movements, leading them to uh, a sense of depression and sadness inside them that they themselves uh, refuse to investigate where it's truly coming from. The uh, the ego, in that sense, is not helping uh, the host to the parasite. Uh, the ego, in that sense, has been diluted by some sort of uh, false self-identity with ascension already. And that that false understanding, that false perspective, that fallacy is what keeps them in a state of bondage, never questioning what is what is truly driving them to these the, the one could say even dangerous depths of depression. Depression and sadness that many people in this culture and in this world seem to be passing on from generation to generation. These, these solar epochs bring forth energies that ultimately are there to evolve our souls. And so it seems that through challenge, there's opportunity to evolve by overcoming those challenges. So it seems that with these epochs, with the increase in the energy moving, there's a lot of opportunity for growth and change. By responding to these energies in a mindful way. So I think the conversation is going to continue along the line of how we uh, use the power of the sun in a mindful way and examine some of the potentials for using some of the, uh, the, the powerful cosmic energies out there to diffuse the attacks from the archons and uh, to, to apply a form of, of spiritual kung fu or martial arts, form of non-physical martial arts, not too, uh, not too different than something like Aikido, or using their energy against them, or uh, directing their energy back at them, and avoiding unnecessary uh, feeding of energy to the Archon that wants to get us angry, and pre-consumed with violent or angry thoughts. Righteous anger is one thing. Blasting back is another. You know, I'm still on the fence. And and in, in, in terms of certain things. I'm still working out certain things as far as what we're actually able to do as human beings to counter. Uh, full-on psychic attack, poltergeist attack, or other forms of attack in the physical. Dealing with our minds and dealing with the martial arts. And there are some people out there that say that you know, there, there's, there's a danger in doing so because you can give energy to that archon. 
And I think that's one, one perspective worth entertaining. I don't believe that's necessarily the truth. I think that there, in fact, is a crossover between the martial arts and psychic protection and counterattack. And that there are certain examples and certain times where somebody should defend themselves in the spiritual realms. In the same way that somebody might defend themselves if they were being attacked in the street, mugged, or sexually assaulted. Where it's within your authority, it's within your sovereignty, to mace that son of a bitch. So there seems to be certain things, though, that are happening in the spiritual realm that, you know, seem to be marrying the physical realm. You know, there are things like spiritual sexual assault that happens to some women on this planet. And so there, there does seem to be, there does seem to be ways things come at us in this world to cause us to learn to become assertive and to assert our will. You know, one can ask yourself, what caused these energy attacks to begin with? Uh, for pe- people that are going through that, was a traumatic experience caused first by their parents? Or is there some other um, explanation for it? Regardless, cowardly behavior or being afraid of such entities, even being afraid that we're giving our energy away if we were to palm strike them back with our thoughts. Uh, yeah, I don't know that such thinking is entirely healthy. We may very well have certain capabilities to 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 duel in a certain in a certain sense in the spiritual realms to to will our energy in a counterattack to do something as disrupt dismantle disarm erase nonviolently the entity that is attacking us and to do so without anger to do so without opening up one's energy field to a counterattack. And so the subject of morality in our own life comes up here and there in our own little lives because when we are doing harm to other people, we can be harming ourselves or our own magnetic field. So if we're harming others and then thinking that we can, you know, counterattack in a certain way against the archons, It's possible that weaknesses in our own magnetic field caused by our own actions uh, can lead to some ugly stuff. And so things like spiritual warfare, that shit is serious business. If one's going to spend their uh, spend their time counterattacking ships in the sky without knowing that they may actually be taking out archons. Like, boom! Uh, that's where the, uh, the counterattack can come in to where, where that person is vulnerable in their own life, uh, they can start to see disturbances in their own life. Uh, places where that person may have created whatever negative karma or whatever may be engaged in certain things, they can have certain disrupt- disruptions. I would say what I've noticed is if they're, if they're living a lifestyle in any way, shape, or form that, that is dependent on other people um, accepting them. Uh, they could see all of a sudden that person no longer accepting them, doing a 180 about front. And I think that when we go through major periods where we clear ourselves of entities and we clear ourselves of that which is feeding on us, again and again, that energy might, uh, for a time, try to come in another way where it's able to have an influence or where it's able to have an influence over a person that perhaps is in our life, which is what makes this whole conversation uh, about you know living in the arconic world a difficult one, and why why many people that have sought to cultivate aspects of themselves, uh, powers of the mind, why a lot of it's been done in nature because you know it's like crossing a certain hurdle uh, seems to come about the certain response to this world or from this world, or people in this world that are programmed by the Archons uh, to treat us a certain way or look upon our path a certain way. And so we contend with that. We contend with the majority of society. We contend with the reality of rejection from society because of the path that we're on. There are people, of course, that do uh, cultivate their own power. 
uh, while living in cities and, uh, you know, while being in regular relationships, people are at different levels of their own evolution. So not everyone is living off the grid. There's plenty of people that are, they're living out these lives in these cities. But I will say that some people have learned to become so powerful that they've also become drained. That a lot of that extra power that they're releasing, creating in these urban environments is also, and at their jobs, is being used and consumed by others that are vampiring on their very powerful energy. So there may be a time where people are able to go along with the system and, and live in this kind of a matrix and live amongst unnatural magnetic fields. But there also comes a time in certain people's lives to where it's, it's no longer something that they're okay with and they need to change up their environment. Different periods of time have brought different challenges to mankind, different tests. What we're seeing now is just simply the, the, the latest. But having the knowledge as to how we can align our intentions and focus and goals and unleashings of certain intentions along with that of the sun, uh, knowing how our thought forms may be interfa interfacing with the sun, how our sun affects us and other cosmo cosmic events, and how our thoughts affect and bounce off each other and can potentially affect cosmic events, events in space and in different levels of potentiality, uh, what is known as telekinesis or moving certain objects with our thoughts. So the question is, how collectively and potentially during certain events like geomagnetic storms, uh, can mankind put their thoughts together to counterattack or diffuse or disarm or straight up erase uh, negative ETs, archons, uh, the dark city machine, the artificial intelligence machine, uh, whatever they are trying to do with CERN, the opening up of portals, the opening up of doorways to, to diffuse that with human intent, to diffuse the intent of the Archons, to disrupt and take out the Archon grid, to bomb it with our minds, to bomb the Archon's grid, to destroy the Archon grid, to link up with other organic human intelligence signals around the world. As you listen to me now with the sound of my voice, join in, join in, Join in as we link together, as we harness the power of the sun right now for the first time, as you hear the sound of my voice, as we use the power of the sun, the geomagnetic storm, the magnetic field of the earth, us linking together telepathically as we counterattack the arconic grid of mind control of inversion, the arconic consciousness that has many people under control let us visualize those people millions of people right now becoming free of the control grid the the very the very link between them and the matrix we're not here to violate free will but we're here to give energy to them freeing themselves we're here to provide energy to them freeing themselves from the dark matrix from the dark city from the dark grid and awakening to free will, awakening to free will, visualizing and seeing a planet where more people awaken to their own free will, to their own potentiality, a world without them, a world without them. Now we do our own work and we work on ourselves as individuals and that's all we can do to work, to live in a world without them. But we will also test and experiment our powers because what, what harm, what harm would it actually be? We look at the powers of the mind that people harness to gamble, to manipulate, to obtain sex with others. Should we not question that mind control? It tells us don't try to take out the archons. Stay in a religious box. Only do things through a, a certain channel or through certain entities. And I call bullshit. I say that we have the ability to affect matter and we should put our minds together and counterattack to send back the negative energy to transmute it to a positive energy, but an energy that is such that is not conducive to letting that Archon control grid artificial machine continue to operate. We have the power of intention as well and they have no right 
to alter our free will. So we're not altering their free will. We are sending back their energy, which is wrong, which, which, counter, which counteracts free will. We are sending it back to them and we are reminding them that they are not working within free will. So their machine will be destroyed at some point. At any point, they have an option to join the light, to join the truth. And there are archetypal characters within even Marvel Comics. It's, it's things like the, the, the Ghost Rider archetype that shows, makes his enemy look into his eyes. And all of a sudden, that apathetic murderer was all of a sudden basically crying in a pile of its own uh, tears and snot, filled all of a sudden with the emotion of what it's like to be the victim. Uh, or to be that person that has been on the opposite end of that person executing the violence. To show them what it's like. Well, we can show the Archons what it's like. And I'll even say that there's a number of human beings here that have come from other realms that are not really of the light. And they have an opportunity to learn about cause and effect. To learn about human emotion. You know, to learn about this, this spiritual war that is taking place. So there are a lot of human beings that are on this planet right now that are, you know, you can even call them first-time humans. Because I don't believe that we live just once. As extreme as that may be, it's more than logical to entertain that possibility. When you look at the widespread amount of information and memories that people have shown themselves to have while living in this realm, memories of faraway places and childhoods and learning certain things and retaining those memories, specific memories of those specific places on the planet, what they've learned, what they've known, and perhaps there's something that you've learned in this life where in reality it feels like you're just relearning the same thing. The question is, how long have we been here? So there's, there's, there are lessons in this life and there are lessons worth learning. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people that would like to claim that we're gods and goddesses in the present. And I certainly think that we're in some sort of stage and evolution of a soul to something and that we come from something and that we're a part of something. But as far as I'm concerned, one of the greatest things that we have to learn here is how to protect ourselves and literally uh, counter-create this world and literally start erasing and removing the damage uh, that has been created from this matrix false reality as we become awakened to the fact that there is a matrix false reality. And there are certain energies that they're using against us, including our own, and it's time to take back those energies, take back our sovereignty, as we talk about grounding, clearing out, and actually understanding how we consciously, psychically, telepathically, uh, and many other ways, spiritually, we energetically connect with that thing in the sky called the sun, which is just a major conduit of energy. If we could start thinking about using that energy now in this moment and connecting our consciousness with that of other people on the planet, combined with an intention in transmuting this negative energy, being beamed at us from wherever it is, encountering with a creative, uh, loving, life-giving energy that is so powerful that it traces itself back to that negative energy that is attacking us. And it literally short circuits. It fries the very, the very motherboard frame. It fries the motherboard. It fries the frame. It fries the core. It fries the circuits. And they will not be prepared, repaired. <laughs> they will not be corrected, that motherboard will be fried. Who knows how many motherboards uh, will be created after that or are in conjunction or in line with the world of motherboards. But hypothetically speaking, there, there is a central point where some of this is coming from. And I really do spark the imagination in this, in this contemplation on being more mindful, on harnessing the energies that are out there. I think that we should counter 
that negative energy and truly intend to see the mainframe, the central command structure of this, fried out in the same way that, that the Archons have tried to invert reality and really they have truly tried to uh, put their fears onto us. I incredible. When we look at the fears of the sun that the Archon media has tried to implant into us as they as they warn us about the sun as they warn us about cancer from the sun as they warn us uh, about skin cancer while they geoengineer the skies themselves we are being led away from the truth about the sun many people have already been away led away from the truth of solar power living off the grid so they live on the grid using fossil resources still to this day even if they think that they are green friendly They've been manipulated by the Archons to think that it's conscious and it's sustainable to live in dense population centers. The truth of the matter is, this grid that we have been conditioned to become dependent on is the same grid the Archons are afraid will collapse. That's the grid also of mind control. That's the grid of satellites. That's the grid of cell phone towers. That's the grid of the military industrial complex. That's the grid of radar. That's the grid of the International Space Station. That's the grid of any mind control apparatus that may be going on right now, physical or non-physical, controlled by the Archons, that is vulnerable to being disrupted by the healing forces of the sun. I think that's a very real concern in the Archonic realms. While they might try to use the sun to power things up and energize themselves, there are such things as short circuits of motherboards and, and mainframes. So let me conclude here with a positive implant to counter the negative implants. We as human beings can be conduits for the positive application of the solar energy to fry the mainframe of Archon Central Headquarters. We can allow ourselves to be a conduit to truly blast through the control matrix of this world to connect with galactic source. And in doing so, we help bring down the Archon control grid. We help disintegrate it with non-violent, peaceful, calm, loving means. We don't just love it out of existence. We actually do the work to erase the grid itself to repair the earth and by speaking for our ancestors and by standing behind the earth against those that would defile her sacred feminine energies. So really, this is a, this is a great time to really evaluate and upgrade and expand our understanding of these energies and how we can use the power of the sun, potentially, collectively, putting our minds together to bring down the Archon Dark Grid. I'm Alex Hansry, and thank you for listening to this Archon podcast series.